Thank you. Um, great to be here. My name is Jacob. Um, I'm the uh, president of Verde, um, and I'm uh, typically living in New York normally, but I'm here for two weeks to uh, attend the Digital Health Days, so it's really great to be here. I'm Stefan. I'm the director of service design. I'm based in Stockholm, and I work together with Jacob when service design meets healthcare. So we're going to try to um, give a couple of examples of uh, the patient-driven healthcare. And uh, real quick about Verde, a 80 people or so um, innovation and design consultancy. Uh, we focus on connected health, which is we innovate through people-driven, digital-enabled products and service solutions for healthcare. Um, and we will uh, try to explain a little bit about what we mean about uh, patient focus. So as we... Um, work in different industries, work with pharma, with medical device development, uh, with primary care innovation, uh, we typically find there's two main themes that comes up. So it's all about driving efficiency and better collaborations in care organizations. It's a huge thing. Um, and, but also the patient side is basically trying to really understand those patients or people to um, really empower them to be part of their own care creation. So, um, there's many different areas you can do this, um, and as we work in both Europe and in the U.S., um, adherence is a pretty big, big um, area. Uh, but care coordination, you know, chronic disease management, clinical trials, there's many different areas where a people-centered or patient-centered focus really come into play. Um, we'll try to give you a couple of examples of that uh, shortly. So, um, just as another example, so. Medic medication non-adherence is a 290 billion US dollar problem um, in US alone. It's 600 billion U uh, US dollars globally. Uh, so that's the kind of pharma world's trick. So if you can get people to take the medication in, in time and in a kind of com complex regimen, uh, you would save a lot of money. Um, so, but it turns out the clinical trials is really about understanding people. So it's not about prescribing a certain drug path. You actually need to get people who want to do this. Um, so it inherently it becomes a people problem. Um, so there's you know, different ways you can go about this. Um, what's interesting here is we start seeing a lot of consumer-focused services coming up. So it's not necessarily only the professional side of trying to care for those patients, but also there's new tools coming up. There's a lot of venture cap going towards these kind of solutions. So Manga Health is one example. MediSafe is also getting kind of multi-million dollar funding for driving new service innovation. Um, we believe that people-driven healthcare really uh, consists of four parts. So it needs to be dem democratized. So you need to provide access to care and access to data. We heard that before. Collaborative, one key point. So anyone can be a care provider, and everyone will work together to provide care. Um, and it's really about being personalized or personalization. So given, providing this holistic picture of patients for these individualized solutions. Uh, and ideally, it's provided anytime and anywhere. You need to fit people's lives and not the other way around. Uh, because they go about their lives, you know, you need to actually understand who they are and where the best points in time would be to provide that care. Um, there is a framework on how to go about this. So um, understanding the full context of people's lives, so the holistic thinking, and all the stakeholders and everyone around it, how they interact. You need to prototype this. You need to actually build something. It's a service that you provide as a healthcare provider. So this is real time. You need to try something. It's, it's hard to build a PowerPoint and say, hey, this is how it's going to work. You need to actually try it. Um, and then you need to be part of that story to really understand what is the thing that they experience within uh, that specific thing that, that we're trying to build. Um, and a quick example of that, Stefan's going to provide us. So, uh, thank you. Um, I think many of you, especially in Sweden, have probably heard about Xperia Lab. From a global perspective, it's a really cool thing happening in Sweden where Värmland County Council actually has a design incubator in their healthcare system in the county council. And we've been working the last year as their strategic advisor, helping them get this health design connection to work. Really exciting, fantastic team. And I just want to share one of the projects we've been a part of uh, about one year ago. 
which was the patient journey project. And we've talked about maps already, and mapping and the joint view is pretty important. But it's also important that it's not just a functional overview and that we really feel for people. So what we've done is basically looking at the entire system, realizing all the people that have an influence on the end patient experience and the family's experience, they're in different parts. You know, they, they have an indirect or, an in the, or a direct influence down uh, in the value chain. So we basically took out real physiotherapist, real nurse, uh, head of ambulance uh, operations and so on, and we put them in a joint team. We've taken out real patients' lives, cases, and with foggy goggles, hear impairment, body suits, and so on, the team from the care chain actually stepped into the, not only the shoes, but also into the feel of, of being a patient and seeing the whole journey end to end, from where it starts for the patient uh, all the way through. So here you can see a little bit what it looks like you can see how she's holding on to the crutch, sort of trying to protect, and how everybody is talking down. So this was one of the tools we used to capture. And even just in the video, you can kind of tell how different it feels to be in that situation. And obviously, when you do that um, with that whole team, you can then glue together what that whole experience looks like. And there's n nothing fancy here, but you can see the personal needs I feel I'm a burden, uh, nobody is sort of, you know, I don't feel like a real person, I don't feel safe. But also from the different people that were interacting with that patient, they were also part of that. And we can see that they see there's so much data and we're not set up for collaboration. So the main insight across this is we need to empower patients to be part of the care in a totally different way, much earlier, uh, and have a deeper understanding. And then Jöran Higlund came and uh, with Hans Carlson, they reenacted one of those journeys as well. And you can read on his blog what he thought about it, but uh, it's pretty clear that getting in there and, and collaborating, getting a real feeling for people is a pretty powerful tool. So to, you know, we talk about going bottom up, going to the people. So I'm going to give Ulla the word now to share with you, with you what she sort of took out of that project real quick. Well, first of all, I have to be honest. When we started this journey, I thought like, Oh my God, eight weeks of meetings every Friday morning. During the journey, I started to look forward to the Fridays. I've been surprised by my own feelings. I got to play the patient. Mm -hmm. I've been a nurse for 40 years, so I thought, I thought I knew what the patient needs, feels, or wants to experience, or how to treat them. And suddenly, when I put my non-seeing eyeglasses on, I became this old man, Uwe. Mostly I realized I was quite alone during the journey. I didn't feel safe. Uh, which reminds me, when I work, to make sure that my patient is safe. It also made me realize that we talk about patient in center. In centrum, we are to look at things from the patient's point of view. We don't do that. The patient is there, being transported around, and uh, sometimes it feels like we have more respect for the doctors than for the patient. If somebody had told me this, it would have been, okay, another 15 minutes to go, and I know this, I've been here for 40 years. I think I know this. And if somebody had told me, you don't know it, I might have been offended. But this came as a surprise, and I, I really had to put myself into the poor man's position. And also, I think everybody should go through this journey. So that's some pretty good uh, insights from her. Um, just um, last 30 seconds here, and there's a couple of takeaways from this program. Um, it's really about empathy. It's not about that actual patient journey. It's about the inner journey that people take together. Um, the, the understanding of how the total ecosystem works, the critique that you can actually step outside your professional role 
and question the car instead of defending it. A pretty important thing to have. Uh, there's an opportunity for systemic change uh, as people see the system solution together uh, and collaborate around that. Um, and actually, pretty important, people were having damn fun. So that's also drive a lot of change. Um, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was very interesting to follow your journey and what, when you actually put yourselves in the patient's perspective. Uh, I, I was working for Dandrids Sjukhus, which is a hospital north of Stockholm, and they could actually prove that if elderly patients come in with a broken hip, for instance, and that they feel that they it have a smooth um, process from entering the hospital to the x-ray, getting their uh, surgery. If that is a smooth process, that actually changes the whole outcome of how, if a lot of elderly people, they actually die when they, uh, that's, it's a very fast decline from when they get their first uh, uh, problem uh, after a fall or something. Uh, but if they feel that everything has run smoothly, they are, feel more in charge of their own healing, and it actually helps them physically to heal. Uh, I, were, were you surprised when you, when you did this journey, when you looked at Ulla Rami's response, for instance, how, her, her feelings towards this? Well, maybe not surprised, but definitely touched. It's quite powerful if somebody has worked for 40 years and has that ability to step out and realize, wow, we need to rethink this. She's actually quit her job, so she can really make a change. So it's mm. pretty powerful what, what happens in the inner journey. Mm. Mm. I was uh, actually quite moved to, to see her, uh, her thoughts on this. Uh, you described earlier in your talk about the non-adherence, and if I understand that correctly, that is when patients don't take their drugs. They just put them in the bathroom cabinet. Don't you think that maybe uh, that is the patient's way of actually listening to their bodies, and they, that would be one of the reasons why they don't want to take that medication, that they don't feel that it's right for them, or what do you think is the reason? I think going back to the previous speaker here, where um, there's a sense of, um, I, I know it, I start getting better, so with, with certain, um, sometimes complex, but also let's say for cancer treatments, let's say, it might be that you feel sometimes better for a while. So you st start going saying, hmm, I'm actually better, I'm, I'm in control of my own thing. I'll, I'll take, I'll step in and, and, and be part of that. Mm -hmm. So that actually happens quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And that's why one of the main drivers of, of that the adherence then drops. Um, but ultimately it's about empowering those people to feel that they're part of the solution. So that's the trick. And that's the, th the one big thing that the entire pharma industry is trying to figure out. How will we actually understand the way we can get inside these people and really get into their minds so they can help us help them? Mm, so communicate with the patient. Wow. Thanks, both of you. Thank you for sharing this with us. Thank Thanks. you.